Hi everyone, my name is Mikhail and I'm going to present our work about prototype pollution vulnerabilities in Node.js, which a popular runtime of JavaScript applications on uh, the server side. This is joint work with Musart Balu and uh, Christian Staiko from CISPA. Uh, let's take a look uh, at how inheritance work in JavaScript through an example. We run Node.js which executes the code in index file. The first line of the code creates an empty JavaScript object. The runtime allocates a new object with the built-in property proto that points to the object prototype. The object prototype has a bunch of functions that we can reuse, for example, to string. To implement inheritance, JavaScript allows to extend the prototype with the new properties. In this example, we define the property x with a value 42. Things get more interesting when we create some other object, in principle unrelated uh, to the first one. Uh, both objects share the same prototype. When the runtime executes the last line of the code to print x property for the second object, it tries to find the property in the object itself. Since x is undefined for the second object, the runtime will look up the property x in the prototype. In this case, it prints 42 to the terminal. So far, so good. What does this feature have to do with security? Well, let's consider the threat model of web uh, applications. Index.js file creates a simple web app that handles two requests, update and backup. The attacker in our threat model uh, can send any request to the server, for example, update with any parameters. Let's see what happens when the parameters are in the figure. Uh, the code creates an empty object. It reads proto property, and then the attacker adds the property shell with the value calc to object prototype. Okay, this code pattern is called prototype pollution. But how can it affect our application? Let's assume that this code handles um, backup requests. Uh, it uh, just ex executes backup script uh, by the helper function. Notice that attacker cannot control any function arguments. In this function, we can give some options in terms of which shell you want to use. If you uh, don't specify this option, it will use the default shell and then it will run uh, a new process. If the attacker sends backup request after prototype pollution, we execute the function and op options.shell reads the attacker controlled uh, property from the prototype and runs the calculator. So we get remote code execution and this code fragment is called prototype pollution gadget. If we find gadget in the code of Node.js itself, the impact is much higher because it potentially affects all applications. In summary, we achieve remote code execution. To achieve remote code execution, we need two steps, identifying prototype pollution and identifying gadgets. We also investigate if um, this is actually a problem in real applications. How to identify prototype pollution in scale? We implemented static analysis for Node.js applications and NPM packages. We use taint analysis where we mark the attacker controlled uh, data by initial uh, input label. However, we, can not, um, uh, we cannot define the things syntactically because not every property assignment leads to prototype pollution. Instead, we use uh, what we call multi-label taint analysis to find the things. Let's take a look at this example. We assume that all arguments of the function attacker control it and mark um, them by input label. We propagate the input label and if we have a property read with the tainted property name, we change the label to proto. It means the attacker can potentially read object prototype here. 
When the analysis detects the property assignment with the receiver that has proto label, like this one, uh, it reports this code fragment as potential prototype pollution uh, vulnerability. We implemented our analysis on top of CodeKL static analysis frame framework. Then we evaluated our analysis on 100 vulnerable packages that we collected. The best result achieves 97% recall, which is necessary to find vulnerabilities in real applications. The second research question is how to identify uh, the gadgets. The analysis, uh, we analyze Node.js code and use dynamic analysis to detect property reads from object prototype. Then we use static analysis to find flows from property reads to internal Node.js function calls. You can find all details in the paper. In presentation, I want to show some interesting results. We detected 11 different gadgets in Node.js APIs. The first gadget is spawn function, which execute new processes. Let's uh, look at the code. Details is not important here, but we see that the property shell and env can be um, undefined. And there is a flow from these properties to internal function call, which is actually um, exploitable. Let's see uh, how remote code execution can be achieved. Suppose that the backup handler calls spawn with no attacker controlled arguments. Uh, the attacker first pollutes the property by update request, as we saw earlier. They add property shell with value node to object prototype. The property env by another request. And send backup request to execute spawn function. Let's see what happens. When spawn execute, uh, it reads click, uh, the value of the shell and uh, env uh, from the prototype. It allows the attacker to run Node.js in debugging mode by controlling um, environment variables and connect remotely to execute arbitrary code. For this, we implemented the shell based on Node.js remote debugging protocol. You can see the short demo on the slide. Uh, the second gadget is the require function. The require function is used to include external packages in an application. Uh, this is a simple snippet uh, of uh, require function. As we can see, it reads a package configuration file and evaluates the entry point. If this is defined uh, in the property main, if main is undefined, Node.js use a default value. Let's see how we can exploit it if the attacker pollutes main property. To exploit the gadget, we need to require a function call uh, for a uh, package without the main uh, property defined. Um, an example of such a package is bytes uh, package. Let's see how it works when the attacker triggers this code to execute the require call. The attacker triggers the backup handler which parses a config file of bytes package. Uh, since the main property is undefined, it looks up the value from the prototype. To achieve remote code execution, the attacker should control this malicious file. As you can guess, this is a strong requirement, as the attacker should be able to upload some malicious file to the local system. Uh, let's see how we can bypass this limitation by combine, combining these two gadgets. The key idea is to use the required gadget to trigger spawn gadget. To achieve this, we need to find an existing file that execute spawn function. If we identify a file in Node.js default distribution, then we increase the impact of the exploit. An example of such a file is 
npm.js, which runs Node instance. Let's look at the end-to-end -end exploit. The attacker pollutes the main property with a pass to npm.js. And the end property um, as required by spawn gadget. Finally, when backup is triggered, uh, Node.js executes the required function uh, and loads npm.js. That calls spawn. The spawn function reads uh, an attacker control at environment variable from the prototype and runs Node.js in debugging mode as we saw earlier. So, the attacker achieved remote code execution for the required call without additional claims. The last research question is how to exploit uh, real applications using or tools and detected gadgets. We crawled the GitHub for Node.js apps and took 15 most popular ones. We ran our tools and got some prototype pollution cases. As you can see, the prototype pollution pattern is rare in practice, and manual verification is applicable for the total number of detected cases. We confirmed that eight detected cases are exploitable and reported them to maintainers. In conclusion, we implemented tools to detect prototype pollution vulnerabilities and their gadgets. Uh, detected 11 new gadgets in Node.js APIs. Uh, the Node.js team already fixed most of them. And reported eight remote code execution attacks to the, in the popular open source application. All code is publicly, publicly available. Thank you for your attention, and I will be happy to answer on questions. Nice. Thanks, speaker.